Well, today I want us to look at something that is to do with God's word against the rebellious people. God's word against the rebellious people. Now, that title alone just tells you what you should expect as far as this teaching is concerned. I want us to consider from the book of Jeremiah chapter 44. What was happening in Jeremiah's time actually plays very common still in our time. The same mannerism of people in the time of Jeremiah is the same mannerism that is so very much common today. People living any way they want. People actually wanting always to front their own ideas, their own lifestyles, their own dealings, and actually everything to do with their pleasures before considering the word of God. So now, I want us to be aided using the very things that happened in Jeremiah's time to see what they really communicate to us that are living in the year 2022. And uh, many people are calling our time the 21st century. And uh, there are things are moving very fast. There's a lot of improvement in technology, human engineering, and so many things that many of you have now come to know as the metaverse and several things to do with uh, actually promoting the umbilical things of uh, mother nature, homosexuality, giving a leeway to abortion. There is a lot of new legislations that have been made as far as the issues that are concerned with uh, conversion therapy. Now you hear what is happening in Canada. There is war, rumors of wars in different nations here in Russia, you hear in Bosnia, Ukraine, uh, China, Taiwan, uh, America, with so many other nations. And then the persecution of the faithful Christians is also increasing in Indonesia, in actually places like China, in places like actually, if you talk about the Arab countries, and then North Korea, and several other places like Nigeria in Africa, it is also becoming so very much common. However, there is nothing that is new under the sun. We should be warned of that, and we should also be aware of that, that indeed there is nothing that is new under the sun. Everything that you see that happens today, it has happened in the former years. And people who lived before us, they were able to experience a number of these atrocities that we are seeing today. Scripture begins in Jeremiah 44 verses 1. It says, The word that came to Jeremiah concerning the Jews who dwell in the land of Egypt, who dwell at Megiddo, at Tephahes, at Noph, and in the country of Pathros, say. Now that is very important for us to understand that true prophets had the word of God, and I'm saying it again, true prophets had the word of God, but false prophets have always had a word. Now with the true prophets, there is always what we call a definite article. They would always receive the word of God. But the false prophets, they have always had what we call a word. And that word is always based on their own imaginations. But true prophets in the Bible, they only spoke when God had given them a word. That is to mean they spoke when it was given unto them. They had nothing to speak until when it was given unto them. Now, the reason as to why they never spoke when they never received anything from the Lord is because they knew the consequences one would have to face to speak in the name of the Lord when the Lord had not given him a message. The clarity to this is actually also made so very much 
clear for you and I to consider from the book of uh, Deuteronomy. When you read from the book of Deuteronomy, the chapter is 18 verses 20. This is what it reveals to us. It says in verses 20, But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. So what is very common, even way back in the time of Moses, prophets that were being led by the false gods, they wanted to gain their relevance, their relevance by claiming that the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was the one inspiring them to speak so they would continue to propagate their erroneous messages. But the Bible says if any of the individuals calling themselves prophets, if they ever spoke anything in the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which word he had not given unto them, but were speaking in the name of other gods, those prophets would actually have to die. Verses 21. And if you say in your heart, now they are speaking to you and I that, that have that common question today, that how do I come to a place of knowing a true prophet and a false one? It says, and if you say in your heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken. Look at uh, verses 22. When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously and you shall not be afraid of him. All biblical prophets they spoke things when they spoke things those things had to come to pass because one of the main things of judging prophecy is actually what we call doctrinal orthodox that that prophet the one who claims to be a prophet is he sound in what he's saying? Other thing was what we call the moral integrity. His lifestyle, was it actually in order? His lifestyle, is it in agreement with the rest of God's written word? The third thing, the revelatory accuracy. If an individual claims to speak for God, all of their prophecy had to be 100% accurate. That's one thing that we are not seeing today, but we have a lot of individuals who doctrinally they are not orthodox, morally they are not of integrity. As far as revelatory occurrence, they do not have it all 100%. What you normally hear is that he is a man, he is liable to make mistakes. But let me tell you, if someone is speaking to, for God, we can be very sure God is not a son of man that he can, he can actually lie. So if someone is speaking to God, you have to be sure that if he claims to have received a prophecy from God, it has always to be 100%. That is why the sure word that can never lie to you is God's written word. Peter the Apostle calls it the sure word of prophecy in 2 Peter uh, 1, 19-21. to 21. So, now those are some of the things that are to do uh, with the main things that we have to consider before even we get into all this. Because the time of Jeremiah, there were a number of self-appointed prophets claiming that they were speaking for God and they were always counterbalancing they were always contradicting the message that god had given to jeremiah whenever jeremiah would tell them of the impending judgment that was coming they would say do not listen to jeremiah he's out of his mind he's lying guys continue to enjoy your work continue to do whatever you want to do but remember even in the earlier chapters of uh, jeremiah 28 29 uh, Jeremiah 30, 31, 32, the warnings were always very clear that do not listen to those prophets. If the Lord said that you're going to spend 70 years in Babylon, never should you listen to any person who tells you that it's not going to be that long. And uh, we are living in a time today that even when you warn and you say, biblically speaking, 
the things that are happening today, they are the signs of the age, people loving onto themselves, people being disobedient, loving pleasure. They are not lovers of God, pretending to be lovers of God, but their actions actually contradict everything. So you hear other people say, no, that one is actually an individual that is instilling fear. It's all about grace. Enjoy yourself and all of that particular Thing. But not to delay you, my dear ones, uh, listening, uh, it's important that we consider what we do have as a clear stipulation in the, in the verses that we do have in Jeremiah 44. It says, once again in verses 2, Jeremiah 44 verses 2, Thus says the Lord, listen to that, it says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, you have seen all the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem and upon all the cities of Judah, and behold this day, they are desolation, and no man dwelleth therein. So now, the warnings had already been given to these individuals that were living at Megiddo, that Jerusalem was left desolate, a dear city, a, a city that God himself separated and he said his name will be in that place. And so these other Israelis that were now living and dwelling in the land of Egypt at a place that was known as Megiddo, they are also being told to use the example of the judgment that had befallen actually Jerusalem with all of its cities of Judah, so that they also amend their ways. You being an Israelite that has run away from Jerusalem and you go to Egypt, that is not a place of an escape. A believer who is in a community where there are no other believers, that should not be actually an excuse for you to begin to cope up to live any way you want because your surrounding does not endorse or actually align with your faith. The Bible says we are the light of the world because we have been begotten of him that, that is the light of the world. So now the warning was given unto these guys that you have seen what I have brought upon Jerusalem. And today as we are living in the 21st century, these are clear warnings that the land of Sodom and Gomorrah, they continue to speak to us even as we do have the writing from the book of Jude verses 5 up to verses uh, 6. That that was a testimony that has been left of us to know that everything that pertains to the homosexuality that has been legislated in different parliaments of different nations, those are actually serious abominations to God. The issues of the individuals promoting an open abortion those are actually things that we should fear for we know what god in the past did to several individuals that were doing those particular things why because the old testament examples were preserved in the scriptures for us not to repeat the same mistakes that those people did as far as first corinthians chapter 10 verses 5 to verses actually 12 is concerned so now they are warning these guys. Look at verses, verses uh, 3. Because of their wickedness, which they have committed to provoke me, that the dwellers of the city of Jerusalem, their city became desolate, and that no man was no longer living there, simply because of their wickedness. Bible adds in to say in verse 3 of uh, Jeremiah 44, because of their wickedness, which they have committed to provoke me to anger, in that they went to burn incense and to serve other gods whom they knew not. They are neither they, you, nor your fathers. So now, that's the thing that resulted to what we see as the desolation that had happened to actually Jerusalem during the time of Jeremiah. God gives a reason as to why he actually made Jerusalem desolate. There was too much wickedness that was 
actually committed by people and as they did that that was a sign of provoking god to to anger people burning incense and serving other gods whom they knew not what is happening today today that is the same thing that is actually happening that people having a form of godliness but denying the power of god there is a lot of idolatry that is so very much common in several churches today and in our communities and in families and in several places that the things that bible tells us actually to distance ourselves from these are the very things today that several people have indeed welcomed so this is the word of god against the rebellious people it was the word that people in megiddo had to listen and it is the same word today that you and i need to take very much serious because the patience of the lord simply means repentance the patience of the lord is not a license that we should continue to live any way we want doing things that actually contradict his instructions that he has given unto us in his word and now today fathers parents they do not know the right thing to teach their children they have taught their children ways of this world you know it's it's okay for kids to choose who they want yes he's born as a male but she wants to be a female he's born as a female but she wants to be a male so these are the common ideologies of our time and they have much capital behind it and a lot of actually assured security that will be given to any person that will raise his tongue against that decision of such children as they continue to do immoral and abominable things verses of jeremiah 44 it says that how be i sent unto you all my servants the prophets rising early and sending them saying oh do not this abominable thing that i hate so before judgment ever came the warnings were always given beforehand and the same thing is true that today as we are living in a time where the canon of the scripture is complete everything that we need to know has now already been given unto us so the faithful ministers will teach the entire counsel of god's word and it will always actually have to go back to people's response what are they choosing to do about that which has already been communicated on as far as actually uh, from the word of god so but the bible says that the lord already sent his prophets rising up early the same is true in jeremiah 7 13 the same is true in jeremiah 7 25 the same is true in jeremiah 25 verses 3 the lord already sending his prophets early now today what goes so very much early faithful ministers they continue to herald they continue to proclaim they continue to teach and show that these kind of lifestyles that people are living in today they should be rejected but it appears that some people are not paying attention it's one thing that is happening and uh, the bible says that the warnings have always gone before judgments the warning have always gone before judgments and so that is why for us in the new testament the bible says for that time for the tempest of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the gentiles when we walked in the last viciousness the lusts the excess of wine revelings backquentings and abominable idolatries so first peter 4 3 say that we as believers we are never we are instructed never to turn to the former ways but where we are living there is a lot of visitation of the former ways because of the common seeker friendly messages soft bible teachings and a number of things that are to do with the narrative theology democracy gospel preaching what actually people want but not preaching what people need to hear it's one thing that is basically missing 
missing that is, that, 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 that is so very much common today with people wanting to receive what they want to hear that ministers because they are being paid by 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 the congregants it's now so very much common we are paying you to to teach us what we want not what actually the scriptures teach now look at uh, verses 5 it says that uh, but they hearken not nor incline their ear to turn from their wickedness to burn no incense unto others so the patience of god indeed has been very much abused and several individuals, they take advantage of the silence of the Lord, saying that where is the judgment? Some people actually, even when you call for them, actually the, from the book of Psalms 90, which says that our days are numbered. They keep on actually twisting the verse by saying, they you say my days are numbered, but I keep on working. So like they're like, until I see something. Until something happens to me, but why would a person have to wait until something actually that, uh, that until actually something bad happens to him or her? Bible says that much as the warnings were given, no one listened, they continued in their wickedness to burn incense to other gods. What is very common now in the church that even when we say that preachers we should go back to the message that has already been given you see there are preachers who are not seeing the sufficiency of that which is written they keep on seeking for new revelations in our time there are a lot of books have been written books like jesus calling by sarah young saying that she, what she received in the bible was not sufficient so she needed go to speak to her in a more clear way by using another so so hence the book name known as jesus calling and so many modern day books that have come today and so many modern day preachers like uh beth Moore, the likes of Joseph Prince, the likes of the Andrew Womax, the likes of actually Kenneth Copeland, Jesse Duplantis, and many apostles and prophets that we do have in Nigeria, Ghana, South Africa, Uganda, Kenya, and several other countries. They have also contributed with all of their ministers that are not seeing the sufficiency of that which is written. And a number of things that are to do with grave soaking, and a number of things that are to do with the a hologram and a thing and a lot of things to do with dreams and all of that particular thing that have been in one or the other fronted before the clear teaching that we do have in the scriptures verses 6 wherefore my fury and my hunger was poured forth and was kindled in the cities of judah and in the streets of jerusalem and they wasted and they, and they wasted and desolate as unto this day so all the former judgments of god they are actually a testimony to us of God's mercy. That it is because God is very merciful that some of these things were written for you and I never to be participants in the very things that made the people that lived here on earth before us and what they had to go through. This is mercy that you have something you can read. You have a written record. You have something that you can always refer to and say, if I continue in my wickedness, how is my end going to be? That any person that is sensible enough, you can learn from the mistakes of they that live before you to live in a manner that glorifies the Lord. Verse 7. Therefore, now saith the Lord, therefore now thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, wherefore commit you this great evil against your souls to cut from you man and woman, child and suckling out of Judah to leave you none to remain. The Bible says that all the wickedness that many do, they are doing them actually against themselves. They are doing them actually against themselves god is not affected by the wicked things we do however when god stops us from doing the wicked things he's wanting to preserve us from being killed by those wicked things we do 
That's why people hear the gospel, but they tend to downplay it. They water it down. They pay no attention. They have excuses for ignoring the truth that, that has been communicated to them because they love their pleasures of sin, because they love their sin. They have become one with their sin. They do not read into the consequences of their sin that even when you herald, you proclaim, you preach, you actually preach and say, guys, we need to turn away. You need to repent from your sin. Someone will not listen or say, you know what? Life is too short. Let me do all that I want to do. But the Bible says something that you need not to miss. It says, the God of Israel, wherefore, commit you this great evil against your souls. That the sin we choose to live in, it will endanger our own souls. It will endanger our own souls. This is not a direct thing unto our God, but the warnings of God are to stop us from actually participating in any of the things that will end up destroying our souls. But because we are so very much rigged that we do not listen, we do not know that all of those bad things that we do and actually sin against God, it is God who is actually merciful that does not want to see any of us actually being destroyed by our own sin. Sin always leadeth to death. Jeremiah 9.21 says, For death is come up in our windows and is entered into our palaces to cut off the children from without and the young men from the streets. So death will always find its way into the life of an individual that does not hearken to God's instruction. So my dear ones, I'm telling you that the testimony that we do have in the scripture, God allowing these things to be preserved, it's all for our own benefit and it's all to communicate to us the goodness, the mercy, the grace of the Lord that has been indeed shown unto us. Bible says in the book of uh, uh, Jeremiah 44 verses 8, In that you provoke me unto wrath with the works of your hands, that our sin, our wickedness, our continuity in the things God instructs us to participate in, they provoke God unto wrath. The God who is righteous and holy, he cannot leave sin minus it being punished. So for him, he will punish the ones that participate in that sin. So the sin that you participate in, it's drawing you closer to God judging you. The best thing is to do what? Is for one to repent of that sin. Because it is provoking the righteous and holy God to judge you. By no means will the holy and the righteous God leave any sin unpunished. And the Bible says, you provoke me unto wrath with the works of your hands, burning incense unto other gods. See what is happening with the Hindus. See what they are doing. Eh? Burning incense. See what is happening to the Catholics. Burning incense. See what is happening to the Buddhists. Burning incense. See what happens to the Muslims. Burning incense. And many other groups of individuals. They, they, there is a different how they burn their incense. Maybe in false doctrine. In unbiblical living. In lies. In drunkenness. In fornication. In abortions. There's a lot of actually incense that is being burnt by how we live and conduct and regulate ourselves. And today there are many people that are very professional in crafting and actually making idols for others to buy because they do receive some finances from particular groups of individuals. Bible says such individuals that do craft the altars, some sort of images, some sort of uh, a, start, a, a, a memorial thing, those individuals, they are actually provoking God to hunger, to wrath. Burning incense unto other gods in the land of Egypt, 
And today what is really happening? Today has, we have a particular thing, the importation and also the exportation of false doctrine. People import wrong teachings from other nations, they take them to other nations. People export wrong teachings from their nations to other nations. People import actually the goods of other nations and they bring them to their nations. People export their goods to other nations. And today it's so very much common with actually the use of the internet it's so very much common. See what is in the movies. See what is in the music, mov uh, whatever videos. See what is on TikTok. See what is on Facebook. See what is on Instagram. See what is on Twitter's and people's Twitter accounts. Nakedness, vile words, and a number of unbiblical things. A number of things that are unacceptable. The Bible says that whether you be going to dwell, to dwell, that you might cut yourself off and that you might be a curse and a reproach among all the nations of the earth. It starts with one nation and then that nation will sell its junk to so many other nations. It starts with an individual, around that individual, there are people close to him and because of the influence of the wrong things that that person is so very much connected to, therefore those that are around him, they will be affected with all of his bad influences. Those things, they provoke God unto wrath, meaning he will destroy the soul that sinneth. Jeremiah chapter 18 is very clear. Look at Jeremiah 44 verses 9 it says have you forgotten the wickedness of your fathers and the wickedness of the kings of judah and the wickedness of their wives and your own wickedness now mark this one very carefully that the israelis that were living in the time of jeremiah they had examples that were to do with the wickedness of the kings of judah the wickedness of their wives the wickedness and the wickedness of a of, of uh, their children but still they never took that to heart to say those individuals were destroyed for their own wickedness however what they did they learned the same thing that made the other guys to be destroyed and therefore they fathered it and today what are we what is happening that the testimony of the Israelis God preserved it for all nations that never had a covenant relationship with him to know that the same way he dealt with the wicked Jews, the same is going to deal with the wicked Gentiles. Because what he hated then, he still hates now. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. He is an immutable God. Malachi 3 6 also concretizes on the same thing. Look into your family. Are you very pleased with how your fathers lived? With how your grandfathers lived? With how their wives lived? With how their children lived? Are you pleased? God is saying, look back into your family and see those that live before you. Is that how I commanded them to live? Are you saying that you are going to live like your forefathers lived? That you didn't learn anything from their mistake? That they died in sin and you also want to die in your sin? Look back to what happened to them. And the Bible says, And the wickedness of your wives, which they committed in the land of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. Today what is really happening? In the countries where you and I are born, and in the streets of our countries, there are a number of abominable things that are being done. The injustices that are done actually to the poor, to the unlearned, to the weak. People being lovers of money, boosters, proud, disobedient to children, unthankful, slanderers, murderers, despisers of good. That even when they hear the sound teaching, they will not change from their lifestyle that contradicts God's word. Jeremiah 44.10 says, They are not humbled even unto this day. 
neither have they feared nor walked in my law today we are to walk still in god is written word not in our ability we are to humble ourselves before him and it is him that is able to work in our hearts and to enable us and to enable us by his grace to live in a manner that honoreth him but the bible says those individuals did not actually humble themselves by considering the examples of they that live before them it is what happened to they that live before us that should humble us this country is going to go to dogs if our leaders if the fathers if the parents if the church leaders do not learn from the mistakes of those individuals that live before our time if we do not learn from those that live before us the same thing that happened then it is very true that people have said that history has a tendency of repeating itself why because people do not learn from history they do not but if people were learning from history history would not have to repeat itself but it has to repeat itself because of the fallenness of man not wanting to learn from the mistakes of they that live before them the bible says they humble not even unto this day neither have they feared nor walked in my law nor in my statutes that i set before you and before your fathers today we are telling people there are no more apostles they don't listen there are no prophets they are not listening god is not giving new revelation because the canon is closed they are not listening women are told to sit and to be silent not to teach and pastor men they are not listening we are saying drunkenness is not okay they are not listening manipulating the the scriptures and twisting them to g- gain money the bible does not permit it they are not listening the examples of they that believed before our time the examples that we have in the scriptures they are enough for us to change so jeremiah tells these guys that were living at megiddo that their sin was going to actually lead them to the same consequence of the people that were dwellers in the city of Jerusalem in the cities of Judah so the punishment that had befell the dwellers of Jerusalem and those in the cities of Judah was the same thing that was waiting for those very Jews that now were living in Egypt in a place that was known as Megiddo the same is being actually held proclaimed and preached to us that the very things God hated then now that the wall of partition has been now removed God is dealing with all men actually the same the time of ignorance god has looked away from it there is enough information for you and i to know that god hates abcd the gentile nations cannot also today claim to say that they do not know how the lord wants them to walk it's now 2021 years ever since christ died and was buried and came out of the out of the grave that the gospel has always been preached there is enough information for one to turn away from his or her sins so my dear ones listening i don't know how much i can make an emphasis about this but there is more for us to learn there is more for us to learn